There was no one flipping burgers. All the grills were cold. Onion rings were in their bags. Fries were growing mold. There were no baristas at Starbucks asking how many shots would you like when all the minimum wage workers went on strike. Thanks, Dave. Um, and actually, before we move on to the next speaker, um, I should apologize and say that in my eagerness to introduce our speakers and get the, uh, the evening going, I forgot to introduce myself. Um, <laughs> uh, I think it was self-evident that I am moderating tonight's panel. Um, but just uh, for folks to know who, who I am, uh, my name is Sebastian LaBelle. I'm the uh, regional branch organizer for the SEIU, uh, the Service Employees International Union, which has been the union through which um, uh, baristas uh, involved in Baristas Rise Up have been unionizing. Um, and I'm very happy to be here. So that said, onward to Shelby. Hello, I'm Shelby. Uh, I'm just going to share a little bit of my story with you, and then I'm going to um, describe a little bit about uh, Baristas Rise Up. So I started working with coffee at the age of 14. I ran a little coffee booth at the uh, Wolf of Farmers Market, and that was with me and my friends. We dealt with uh, doing um, cash and keeping afloat. We did uh, inventory and equipment, and we had to transport that every week. Um, so that was a lot of fun, and that started off my career. And since then, I've been working at uh, different small coffee shops, and I've also worked for Tim Hortons. Um, and in 2010, I worked for Perks Coffee, which was on Quinpool Road. Uh, and when they closed down in August of 2010, they cheated me out of my last months of wages, which was very unfortunate. Uh, they owe me still about $1,100, um, and even though the uh, Labor Board has conducted a uh, investigation and said that yes, they are entitled to their wages that they earned. Um, I won't see that money come back because they simply can't squeeze the money out of the owner, which is too bad. And we're not protected under the Federal Wage Protection Program because they didn't go bankrupt. So what can you do? Uh, but I started working at Second Cup in the exact same location in 2012 in April when the Second Cup opened. Uh, and I had really great expectations. I met the owner and she was really, um, she seemed very professional and very eager to get her business started and she seemed really involved. Uh, and we discussed things like um, $100 tip weeks and full-time hours and, you know, working <coughs> Monday to Friday, 6.30 to 2.30. Fantastic stuff. But once I got there, <laughs> I worked there for almost a year before I even saw full-time work. And when I did see full-time work, it was in the evenings, which I hated. Um, so all of the staff with me did good work. Uh, a lot of us had been working there since the opening of the store. <clears throat> and um, we got lots and lots of compliments from different business owners who were regular customers saying that, oh, you're so, your owner is so lucky to have you. You guys are such good service people. Um, but uh, nothing ever really moved forward despite a bunch of promises. Things like, we're going to get a chalkboard, things like, we're going to get a bench and an ashtray outside, or we're going to start up an email list, or we're going to start having events at the cafe, like having somebody come in and speak, or having somebody come in and read stories to little kids. None of that ever happened, and so uh, things were stagnant, there was a standstill, and we wanted to move forward. But um, as things progressed, uh, business started to get a little bit slower, because it was the winter months. Um, and uh, suddenly, our hours were reduced. We were seeing people work um, by themselves until 10 o'clock at night. Um, working by themselves for about five hours, which means you can't leave the till, you can't go to the bathroom for five hours, you can't have a break for five hours or eat. Um, and we were not satisfied with that. So we brought up concerns to the owner. We said, hey, we're not okay with this. Um, we want at least a second person on until I can have my break, or I need a second person on in the morning because it's really busy and I can't handle it myself. If you see somebody walking away, 
that's not just that one person that you've lost business with. That person will go and tell all of their friends, hey, don't go to Second Cup on Quinpool because their service is really slow. You're going to have to wait about 15 minutes for a cup of coffee. And that's just ridiculous. Um, so uh, after we repeatedly brought our concerns and ideas to the owner, uh, we finally decided that we needed to take action and something needed to change when we needed to do that. Uh, so we, uh, as a group, um, approached Jason Edwards from the SEIU Local 2, and we got um, into a discussion about what a union could do for us or what a union couldn't do for us, um, and essentially how easy it would be to do. So that um, put the wheels in motion, and some of us signed cards, some of us went and had different discussions with different uh, coworkers. So. That was an interesting uh, experience because almost everybody was on board with it as soon as we mentioned anything about a union, um, which was really fun. Uh, so after we filed for the union vote um, and the owner got the notification of the filing for the union vote, uh, things changed rapidly. Um, there was a lot of cornering. She would take people into her office and. Uh, just ask them a bunch of illegal questions about why and how uh, of the union. Um, and then after we had some of those discussions with her um, or said to her, I don't want to talk about it, there were threats. Uh, I've got a quote from her here. <laughs> <laughs> She's so quotable. She's so quotable. <laughs> she says, if this union vote goes through, you will never have a say with me again. That's awkward. Um, and to myself, uh, there was this moment where we had taken a, a photograph of all of us with our union cards, and we stuck it on the bulletin board in the customer side of the cafe. And um, it was just to like <coughs> prove to everybody that we were union supporters and we've got that protection. Um, but once everybody was fired, except for me, she took down that photo and she took me back into her office. She dangled it up in front of my face. She said, take a look at this, take a good look. Who do you see here that's left? Hmm. Uh, uh, and I could only shrug my shoulders and say, just me. So that was awful. Um, and even in the beginning, I talked to her a little bit about, uh, I mentioned what was happening with just us and uh, she stopped me in my tracks and she said, no, 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 that uh, what's going on there, um, the uh, managers of that cafe have done the right thing by firing those people because they kept the union from coming in. Hmm. Yeah, so that's how that went. Uh, and then two days after the union vote, um, we had a staff meeting and it was not as positive as the first one she told us that she was making changes to uh, our hours. Everybody's hours got cut. Um, even though the hours at the cafe didn't change, she brought in people from her other store to uh, cover what hours were not being covered by the uh, original staff of that store. Um, and uh, she told us that she was going to change the policy on tips, whereas before we were just doing it by shift, we would take all the change that we had received and divvy it up 50-50 for the two people working on that shift. Um, but instead, she was going to take all the tips, hold them each day, and then subtract whatever shortages came up at the end of the week from, the, from our tips, and then put those tips on our pay where they would be taxed. Yeah, it hurts. It hurts. So where I was making about 15 to $25 a day, uh, I'm now making, uh, I don't know, what do I see, like $30 on a paycheck. It's gross. Um, so uh, we also had just really silly changes like no eating in the stock room and no smoking outside and just really silly stuff. But uh, what made this whole process bearable is that I had not only my coworkers to support me, um, and not just the union either, but I also had an entire group of people who didn't know me, but they completely understood how absolutely frustrating and sometimes hilarious 
it can be working in an environment with high expectations for service and uh, absolutely no expectations for conscious thought or self-worth. Um, so community is really the important uh, is really important and empowering for me, um, and our goals and potential grow as each voice uh, adds to our song of solidarity. <laughs> so baristas rise up is looking for new members, and we hope to see a rapid change in the attitude towards service workers in the coming months. So together we can change working conditions across Halifax and make things livable and reliable because everybody deserves to be treated with dignity and respect at work. There was no one pumping gasoline, no one driving from town to town. No one at the register, all the highways were shut down. Cars were stuck in the garage, CEOs on bikes. When all the minimum wage workers went on strike. 